This week on TBSW episode 108, we talk about Drunk Tank Pink, Hands On Hard Body, Gorilla Glue Girl update, Eduardo Garcia, Australian Open update, and Michael Jackson shopping wish. Stay tuned for TBSW episode 108. The B Side Word. Welcome to the B Side Word. We are a group of friends from around the world where we share our thoughts and opinions on interesting articles. I'm Devin and I'm here with Emma. Hey. I'm here with CJ. Hello. And I'm here with Alex. Ahoy. AKA Zanzibar. Sorry, you put the microphone like covering half my face. So I couldn't see. <laughs> so I had to bring it down. Can I uh, bring up a few of my uh, stories for the week? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was talking to a friend and um, he started talking about the Super Bowl. Who's into the Super Bowl here? Not into it other than the halftime entertainment. I watched the whole game. Did you? Did you? Um, well, there's and- some. Yeah. I also know that it's Tampa Bay because my brother's university was there and it was the second time. No one cares. No one cares. Okay. Can I get on with the story? Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's um, all I know about All right. All right. Let me get on with the story. <laughs> so, in this, world, in this world of betting, you can bet on about anything. On, 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 about... On anything. You can bet on anything. Literally anything. And there was a exotic betting on the under and overs of the national anthem. What? How long someone sings the national anthem before the Super Bowl. Okay. And I think the line was 2 minutes and 25 seconds. Oh. There's actual bet. No. There's an actual bet. But someone recorded the rehearsal. I was going to say, the, <laughs> the in people would know because they hear the yeah. rehearsal all the time. They got the rehearsal and I think people started loading on uh, that it was going to be over 2 minutes and 25 seconds <laughs> and a lot of people won. Yes, sir. Like, do they win big? I don't think it's huge odds, but I'm just saying, like, I don't know. Did you see the weekend's performance? I didn't like it. I didn't Did see it. Second? What I saw on oh, yeah. Twitter, so uh, uh, as my sister briefly mentioned, because I went to Union in Tampa, that's where a lot of my friends are. So on social media, really, that's uh, where are, are, a you, lot of... are you that brother? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was someone else, man. <laughs> that's where like a lot of my a lot of my social media feed is people from Tampa so when it comes to the Super Bowl like, that's, that's just been a lot of what I've seen right. but they did for his performance they recruited a lot of people from Tampa to be in it so all the people like in the red jackets in the black trousers and stuff I didn't see this by the way I've, I've literally only just seen pictures of people who were in it um, like mm. taking pictures of themselves but they were wearing these white mask with thing it looked oh, like yeah. they were wearing jock straps on their head yeah. like that is all i could yeah. think yeah <laughs> they look like a bunch of diggits but do you know what it was what was it you, is this your story or you don't know i've not I, oh they just it was like actually bandages straps. no no it's bandages and i think the oh, whole no, yeah i could see up clo- like people were taking pictures of clothes but it just looked like a bunch like i but don't I, know what it was supposed to represent well he said was... i don't know the full he he said something there was a deeper context to why and it was about social media people having to change themselves drastically blah 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 oh, all right i got two things right i got two things with that so there was this young boy that came on that went on um on one of his instagram things and he's made this video and he said that can all you ladies stop wearing makeup? Stop wearing makeup to the point you people don't know what you look like, right? And he's going off this rant and I'm like, what's this guy talking about? He's like 14. Anyways, he says, because if someone if someone like um, kidnaps you, no one's going to know what you look like. No one. <laughs> You're going to have this full Instagram page and no one's going to know what you look like. Because when they kidnap you, they're going to wash your face and you're going to walk around and they go, oh, that's not her. Because that's not what she looked like. Do you know what I mean? And I was thinking in my head, I go, I get it. But does it change that much? Does your face change that much with all the makeup? What a perspective. 
There, it's like there when you, are, it's like a criminal when they run away and they dye their hair. They won't wouldn't need to. They just wash. Their they just face. wash wash your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. There are there are definitely people who are unrecognizable when they're not dolled up. Right. Like, you wouldn't. Yeah. You, you've woken up near a couple of. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> Me in a lockdown. <laughs> Like no, it's it's, uh, it's let's be honest. You've gone to sleep and you're like, oh, she looks nice. You've woken up. Who the fuck's that? <laughs> it's it's one what of are those. It's like <laughs> I thought she had boobs. <laughs> Chicken fillets. Man, I, I'm gonna stop drinking. <laughs> it's one of those where they they like some women have intentionally done like a transformation and shown it like on social media of mm-hmm. what they look like mm, yeah. before or after kind of thing. It is. It's. It's pretty. I just love that perspective because I never would ever think. Yeah, me either. That way. <laughs> me either. It took me by surprise. <laughs> A fourteen-year-old as well. Brilliant. And and another thing, because you brought it up, the jock straps, right? Which isn't. It's bandages. It's not jock straps. Yeah, but um, a lady got refused in America. Got refused to to a shop, into a shop to buy uh, food for her dog. Right, and the security guard's like, uh, "Madam, you can't come in. You haven't got a mask." And she's like, "I'm just gonna go get in my the kibble, and I'm coming back out." And the security guard said, "No." So she <laughs> took off her g-string in front of him, and put it on her face. She goes, "Is this not a mask?" No. <gasps> and the security guard said, "Look, I love the imagination, but I still can't let you in because it's not a mask." And she's like, "Yes, it is. Cover my mouth." It's covering my nose, my mouth. Ew. And she said, no, like, you've got you've to gotta go. Was, first of all, okay. was she wearing a skirt? Or she a was dress? wearing a skirt. Yeah, she was wearing a skirt. All right. Because yep. if she was wearing trousers, of- that would have been a really awkward. <laughs> like- <laughs> yeah. And was she unattractive? No, she was, she was pretty attractive. I would have let that shit slide. <laughs> <laughs> CJ. The double standard. <laughs> All right, let's get on with the show. Who's heard of Drunk Tank Pink? No one. Oh, for a moment, I, 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 I thought I thought one of them, one one of the boys, might have, but no, no, I hadn't either. So. Why? Why would you assume one of us would know? <laughs> because of... that's quite that is quite <laughs> sexist. I'm offended. No, you'll understand why. Because drunk tank pink is a color, but there's a lot of psychology behind this color, and it stems from the 70s and 80s, late 70s, early 80s. So drunk oh, tank pink. I, I've been I've been in the drunk tank a couple of times. It was great. Oh. Can I just clarify, is the drunk tank where they send you uh, when you're really drunk and they lock you up in just like the jail type thing? To keep you safe, isn't it? Yeah, they put you in this like little glass cell thing where they can watch you. Yeah. Was it pink? And, and it's grey. Yeah. Okay. And the other side's glass. So. And they're looking at you. Well, mm. this, they call it and drunk tank pee in pink. Front of them and it was everything. It's Weird. a Pepto-Bismol, you know what that is, that... that um, that really actually yummy looking, <laughs> it actually looks so yummy <laughs> medicine. Oh God, isn't that a pink stuff that helps your stomach acid? Yes, yes, yeah. But it looks so nice. That, that, stuff, does, that stuff does not look yummy. No, it looks yummy, but it doesn't taste nice. It looks, but it looks chalky. Yum. Yeah. It looks chalky and... Yeah. No, it looks nice. I think it kind of must taste a bit like Gaviscon, but pink. But anyway, it's that color. So your bubblegum type shade. And in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s, psychologists found out that this particular pink color calmed children in schools in Canada. So they're like, hmm, well. Hold on here. Canada, the people there are usually quite calm. Well, I guess they were comparing it to what the kids were like before and then what they were like after. So they're like, okay, if this helps to calm down school children, I wonder if it will help calm down aggressive people, more specifically, aggressive prisoners. So what they did is they went and painted, a lot of prisons went and painted 
uh, the inside of drunk tanks or jail cells or like the whole sort of jail area, this pink color, and that's how it got its name, drunk tank pink. And they found that the prisoners were much calmer. They gathered evidence over a nine-month period and any aggressive prisoners, they'd put them into uh, this pink area and they would just calm down within 15 minutes. <laughs> anyway, this psychology progressed <laughs> and, that way. and football teams started painting the rival's changing room pink. <laughs> this particular shade of pink because they were like, this is going to make them not pay, not play as well. That's a, that's They're a, not going to be as aggressive. Tactic, right? I like that tactic. The psychology of colours. This is something we were actually talking about this yesterday at work, I think. What? Um, what the hell are you guys talking about at work? I can't no, remember I like what it. made it come up, but we were talking about it. And like, for example, social medias typically are all blue because it's, associated as a more social color it's more inviting um calming color um then if you think health and fitness things products whatever are normally green and we were saying like uh there's there's one for insurance if you're buying uh, if you're buying a car for not for sorry this isn't insurance but if you're buying a car for a new driver white is a really good color to buy or a bright color because it stands out so they're less likely to get in accidents. Yeah. It's more likely to be seen. Um, and then the urban myth of red being if you buy a red car, insurers would charge you more because it induces more anger in people on the road. <laughs> um, black being a car that would have higher insurance because you're more likely to, you're less likely to be seen, so more right. likely to be in accidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was just looking as well, like because food packaging is one that I've always remembered, but I never remember what the colours are. And it's a saying, um, green for healthy and natural foods, yellow for high energy serotonin inducing products, orange for healthy but mostly filling foods like oats, and then blue for like fun foods like cakes and crackers and things. And Interesting. It's... Like this whole color thing is fascinating to know, like how how much thought goes into that. Yeah, you, just, you never even consider it. Never. You you talk about the tweet. This was you, you're referencing Cardi B's tweet about Valentine's Day, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. And she was talking. I can't remember, I haven't got it up on me, or I can't remember exactly what she said, but the essence being that Valentine's Day is for women, not for men. Yeah. Like, don't, don't buy... Sexist. Don't buy... How about not, gay men? She said, basically, you can buy gifts for men, but the woman's gift should cost more. Yes. Why? I'll read the tweet now. I'll read the tweet now. What a she believes men should spend more on gifts for the holidays, f for the holiday than women. Men deserve to get a gift as well for Valentine's Day. Can you say it in the way you said it earlier? Men? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you have to now. I can't. I can't. It's oh, yeah. under pressure now. I want to hear this Man. now. Men deserve to get gifts as well on Valentine's Day. No. But the gift <laughs> have to be less expensive than the girl's gift, she wrote. So if he buys what? you flowers, then you buy him grass. <laughs> 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 I, I've, this has been a big debate on Twitter this week with Valentine's really? Day obviously coming out. I've seen a lot of people talking about it. I totally this. forgot. <gasps> oh, sorry. I think, and I love this take, Valentine's Day should be 100% about buying the men more gift than the women. Because when it comes down to it, the man buys the diamond ring for the marriage, which outweighs all Valentine's gifts. And the woman doesn't buy list? anything for the man for marriage. M m men get screwed a lot on the gifts, don't we? Well, <clears throat> well, I mean, they, I mean, if you the have women... a joint income, then you're both buying it, really. Can I defend you? Yes. Can I like... defend you? Okay. I'll defend just you. Just so you know, Ready? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to like. Stir I'm gonna defend. I'm gonna defend <laughs> women, right? <laughs> oh. Um, women give us give us men the greatest gift of all. Children. No. Divorce. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no? Wait, which one was it? What's the answer? I don't you know. I just left it dot, 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 dot. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. No one, no one <laughs> wants to say anything. <laughs> But yeah, Emma, on your on your thing, do you think that it should be equal gifts or do you think the men should spend more? I actually don't see Valentine's Day as a woman's, only just a woman's thing. I thought it was just a couple's thing for me. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. What Emma, saw, Emma always lesbian, saw Valentine's Day. What happens Day? in a lesbian relationship? <laughs> but we, we've never bought each other gifts on Valentine's Day. We, we're not that. Um, we don't really Emma's, usually, we don't celebrate it. No. That, that, that's, that's because Ernest doesn't buy, like to buy flowers. Well, I don't know. Like for me, Valentine's Day just in general has always been one where it's like, why? I, I Like, it, it's to me, it's the ultimate, I'm just digging my heels into being a consumer. Like you can do this, you can pick any day of the year to celebrate your, your relationship. Why do you have to do it on this day? Because shops. I'll give debate. you a reason. <laughs> There's always that. And it, the psychology yeah. is exactly I, I'm the same tell you why. as why people panic by toilet roll. The psychology. The is psych- that what they said? That's what I say. Oh. <laughs> the psychology. Oh, okay. I, 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 I reckon it's by it's there, you mean Emma? She said yes. so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because everyone else is doing it, so all the girls are getting it. And you feel bad if your girl, if you don't get it for your girlfriend, or the girl will make sure you get something because she doesn't want to be the only one that doesn't have it. This so, like you can you could be the best boyfriend or girlfriend ever. All year you could treat them better than any person you know treats their partner, and if you don't buy them something for Valentine's, they'll shit on you. And it's just like, wh- what? Why? I don't. Yeah, it, it's don't such a it. weird day to me. I, it, it, this sounds like you have some actual. Skin in the game here. I don't. Right? I have zero skin in the what game. What have you done on Valentine's Day which has caused this much hatred for the day? Nothing. I'm not like Emma. Uh, have <laughs> you been a great guy to a young <sighs> lady and then have not bought her flowers on <laughs> Valentine's Day and she's completely hated you for it? No, not at all. What um, do you mean? She's not, wait, wait, wait. He's not like Emma. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I missed that. Are you... <laughs> whoa, what? He's just referring to something. Why? What happened? Nothing. It was between me and you? No. But, <laughs> listen. What happened? We don't need to go there. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway. Are you keeping secrets from me? No, you already know this. Oh. But, <gasps> also, know. in saying that, that we don't celebrate, I actually do understand why people would want to celebrate, and I wouldn't mind celebrating every now and then myself and i think the reason is just because life gets very busy uh, and yes you're in a relationship uh, and yes you love each other or, you know she's working tomorrow every day however I do anything and i forgot that it was valentine's day tomorrow that's what i was gonna say how rude but what, I had something I, what planned. i'm saying is that Don't it's lie. nice to have the <laughs> reminder to actually take the time for your relationship and sometimes it's just the reminder you know like valentine's day is coming up we're like oh we actually really need to do spend some time and maybe this is a good time to go on a date, whatever, because life does get busy and you just don't get around to stuff. So it, yeah, but I it's, feel for some it's, couples it's, it's a nice not, reminder and makes makes you take that time. But it's not, again, for I, me, I, I, it's I, I, nothing I, I, to do with the fact of doing something as a couple or respecting each other, anything like that. It's the pointer of the day specifically. Like it, to me, is just the ultimate sheep uh, holiday. Like of all the holidays we have, it's the ultimate sheep holiday of I just do what I'm told because I'm supposed to do what I'm told. But but isn't that in every relationship? The man just does what he's told? No, I don't mean as a man. I mean as people. Like as a if social. You want, if you want to celebrate Valentine's Day itself, it's the ultimate. I, I can't think for myself. I need to do what other people tell me to do. Like, you, mm. as I said, you can do this. I, like, as Emma said, if you use it as a reminder, fine. But if you like, if you're rigid in on the day of Valentine's Day, if I don't do something or get a gift or give a gift or something like that, I I just don't get that mm. uh, at all. I, I can't wrap my head around why people are so drawn to it. Hmm. Now this is interesting. It says there's the dark origins of Valentine's Day. The ancient Romans might be responsible for the name of Valentine's Day because Emperor Claudius the Second. 
executed two men, both named Valentine, on February 14th. In different years of the 3rd century AD, their martyrdom was honoured by the Catholic Church with the celebration of St. Valentine's Day. Hmm. So it's got so nothing that, to do with love. I, 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 first How of on all, earth? I never, like, did you find the two men that are named Valentine? That's How, my big question. <laughs> How on earth is murdering two men with the same name ever translating into a romantic holiday? Well, that's d- d- one, d- d- that's d- one d- reason you know why, why it could be linked. I will tell it's you why. Definitive. Because women are killing our souls. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's so happy with himself as well. So at the time of Valentine, <laughs> yeah. this is St. Valentine, one of the people that got murdered. At the time, many Romans were converting to Christianity, but... Emperor Claudius II was a pagan. Strict laws about Christ- what, with strict laws about what they could do, and he believed Roman soldiers, shol- shoulders, <laughs> soldiers, should be completed completely devoted to Rome, and therefore passed the law preventing them from marrying. Saint Valentine began to marry these soldiers in secret, um, in secret Christian ceremonies, and this was the beginning of his reputation for believing in the importance of love. Uh, then he was jailed for his crimes against Claudius. Whilst imprisoned, he cared for fellow prisoners um, and also his jailer's blind daughter. Ooh, interesting. Legend had it he cured the girl's blindness and his final act before being executed was to write her a love message signed from your Valentine. Uh, okay. He was I'm executed saying, like, on the 14th like, of Feb. It's now quite morbid when you find it. In the year 270. Story. So is anyone doing anything for Valentine's Day? <laughs> no, I forgot about it and I'm actually <laughs> working. <laughs> we'll go watch a movie, like usual. They watch a movie on Valentine's <laughs> oh, Day. Oh, that's right. That's what we do. We watch movies. They yeah. have. Yeah. I've been home alone and, and they've the, gone out to the cinema. And we actually, we actually get a couple's popcorn as well. Yeah. It's cheaper on Valentine's Day. Yeah. And is pe- it? And the pe- yeah. Are you making that up? <laughs> and the people what look at you is and a think you're an popcorn. item. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple's popcorn meal, right? We get two drinks. In a large popcorn. You said you stay home. You had um, you had work that year as well. What are you talking about? I've been working. Sundays Emma's always for working years. on Valentine's yeah. Day. I lo- I like this idea that Emma works on Valentine's Day, which means twenty four hours of that day she is unavailable. So you can't do anything. <laughs> oh, sh- shit! He got you there. No, no, it's um, <laughs> it's uh, it's um, there's this thing that Damn. happens and um. Damn, it just that kick off, in the balls must have hurt. Cuts off, uh, <laughs> cuts off, uh, and uh, yeah, that's what you that's what you get from kicking the, him in the nuts. And you drop the, your drink, and then life happens. <laughs> and uh, but you're right, Alexander. You're right, cause like there's more. I show my love towards Emma on other days on Valentine's Day to make now up for he's the on day my side. that uh. <laughs> For the day that I do miss, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean. That's what I. Uh, F- in that right end. Funny em. how quickly he turned. In that right <laughs> end. Do I don't I tell you how much I love you and how how beautiful you are to me every day? Y- yeah. See. Oh, that was a tortured you. yes. I know. <laughs> She's yeah. like a bit of say. See what yes, I mean? Even, even other people are noticing. Even other people are noticing. What? Your hesitance. It was not tortured. He actually does. I, do you know what? I just want to end end my thoughts on this one with a caveat of I'm a romantic. It's like crazy anyway. So I, I like doing things the romantic Aww, side. So really more, of, more often than not, if I am with someone, I will be doing something on Valentine's Day, but it won't be because it's Valentine's Day. Hold on here. Are you, are you trying to sell yourself on the podcast to find women? No. Not at all. <laughs> Because uh, if um, we're doing that, I just want to say I'm a gentle and tender lover. <laughs> oh, my God. Where is this going? <laughs> I don't know if that was like you're trying to solicit yourself to me or if you were just jumping on the bandwagon there. <laughs> I was just jumping on the bandwagon, to be honest with you. I was thinking oh if, he, if he's doing it, I might as well throw my hat in, my hat in the friggin' in the middle <laughs> We'll, we'll see who gets more comments. The gentle and tender lover? Or the guy will take you out for a cheap dinner on Valentine's Day? <laughs> <laughs> Competitions. They, they, 
they ask you to do all sorts of things, don't they? Now, Dev put an article in <laughs> and it's the it's the hands-on hard body one, right? If you're wondering what that is, I'm not sure if anyone's watched Blacklist at all, but this is what it reminded me of. There was an episode in Blacklist where there was a competition and the guy wants to win a truck. So if you want to win this truck, you have to put your hand on the truck and you're not allowed to take your hand off. It's got to be one hand at all times touching this truck. And basically you stay there until you're the last person. And whoever is the last person wins the truck. Do you remember that episode? No. Yeah, the... Yes, the the accountant I, guy. I, I watched Blacklist as well, and I don't remember the that. The accountant I guy. Like not Blacklist. Blacklist, yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I, I was quite sure she said yes. Blacklist. Oh, Blacklist. Oh, yeah, yeah, Blacklist. The short guy. Yeah, yeah, the, the accountant. The short guy that works oh, for yeah, the RTA. Yeah, the accountant. Yeah, yeah the accountant. He, want, he wanted to. No, he's he, not the accountant. Yeah. He works for the motor motor place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I've not even. He's the torture heard guy. The show. <laughs> Blacklist. Oh, you have to watch yeah. it if you haven't. It's so good. Um. So this is what that competition is about and i guess quentin tarantino was doing an interview and remembering a movie or a documentary it was um back in 1997 about people trying to win a truck and they they had to have their hands on this truck at all times they get a five minute break every hour a 15 minute break every 45 minutes and it just played out how those particular people involved so like if i was doing a car just just so you get my strategy if you're listening you're in this situation (laughs) top of the wheel so then you can yeah. sit down and top on the top the wheel. means you can just like if you if you fall asleep or anything your arm will stay there because this gravity will keep it on top ah. i wonder if you're allowed to touch the wheel or if it has to be the the panel the car is not <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you, don't argue because yeah. you don't know the answer <laughs> alexander would bring <laughs> his <laughs> no he'd and bring you know, his mechanic and you know the other thing i'll do as well is this if it was a truck i'm open the i'm open the door Lay down on the back seat and just have my hand like this. <laughs> so if it if it's the truck, if you have to be outside, lay in the bed. Ah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed. You have to be standing up. But I don't like standing up. Well, yes. Well, that's right. There was a there was one in Canberra last year. It was a fundraise for your favorite charity. The top twenty fundraisers were selected to compete in this challenge and uh, it was for a 2020 Vida polo car and they got 10 minutes every two hours that's a long time and then that's all it says 10 minutes every two hours but that's, basically that's long, I, 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 I don't think you should be allowed to have a break i think <laughs> you have to make the conscious decision that you're gonna have to pee yourself Oh, yuck, though. I mean, then it just becomes <laughs> yes. unsanitary. Pe- people, who pe- people who aren't prepared to pee themselves should not be allowed to win. I mean, <laughs> I feel like now we're, in the, now we're in the arena of, like, the, the king with his jester. Like, just making you dance. <laughs> yeah. Dance, monkey, dance. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> pee. But you can. It when was okay pants. to bring anything. Your phone, headphones, laptop, whatever. Snacks, whatever you want. Watch movies, whatever, but you got to keep sofa. your hand on the car. No tagging, back. no switching players. And yeah, second prize even wins five grand. I, it, you would go in there obviously thinking, I can do this. I got this. I got this. But after 60 hours. No, because the, you've, the article really went into the psychology. Cool to can you do look that it up week. into the psychology? The psychology of um, what happened to them when they were. Um, when they, they became were... friends. No, and- that's not what it is. They went a bit loopy. <laughs> what do you mean they became friends? Are you just making it up? No, they actually, it said that <laughs> they they, they kind of, they. it was interesting to watch their relationships build with each other because they're all in the same situation for so many hours. Yeah, but they also went loopy, didn't they? That's what it said in the article. So do you all know Mr. Beast? No. no. Mr. Beast is a YouTuber. Um position to be the first youtube billionaire at this rate he wow. does a lot of fun giveaway type things on his channel um he's the guy's the guy's pretty genius um i would look into the mr beast burger he's that's that's quite an interesting thing but more pointed on this he released an app 
where this was the same principle. You had to keep your finger on the screen. And then, like, every so often, I think, like, a thing would pop up on the screen. We'd have to drag your finger to, to make sure that you're still, like, on it, like, actually there and it's a person yeah. and stuff. Um, and, like, you raise, I think you had to pay to get the app, like, a pound or a dollar or whatever to get the app or whatever. And then it, there was a, I can't remember what the gift, the giveaway was, the prize. But I just thought that was a genius version of this and using leverage because it's remote. Like, you don't have to all be like the car one you kind of have to be there yeah this this do it on your phone that's interesting what do you win i can't remember what they won it was it was a good it was a good prize i think it was a lot of money or something it was a good prize no way how long did people do it for all right i just remember this i don't have all the details calm down i'll i'll figure it out so tell me okay. about the psychology of this. Well, time. it didn't. Well, so for, so there's a couple. Like one person was praying a lot because she wanted to win the car. She had her congregation praying behind her. One teenager was chain eating Snicker bars, which didn't go down so well. Someone else was there because yeah. they're in a low paying job and they were just like desperate to win it. Um, it just said it's like a human drama, like watching a stuck elevator with small annoyances and petty rivalries blown out of proportion. <laughs> People laughing, humming, complaining. Um, let's have a look. That's it. And then just contestants peel off one by one. Because, like, after, after like, uh, the first four hours, right, you, you usually have your mask on, the, the mask you put on that everyone sees out in the world, right? But after a while, you get comfortable in your environment and all the nuances that make you you start to come out. Yeah. All the yeah. stuff like you unconsciously do, mm-hmm. like um, like laugh out mm-hmm. loud or so you start uh, picking your nose or picking your ears. You Like you stop caring after a while because you're so comfortable in your environment. You know what I mean? Oh, my goodness. No? Yeah. No, yes? I understand what you're saying. Hmm. You just reminded me of something. We'll talk about that next, I think. Okay. So, but yeah, definitely, and that's when people will see the real you. They would, pro- and, and I think that's probably what happens with Big Brother and stuff like that as yeah. well, because they at first they realize all the cameras in there, but they're in there for like six weeks or something crazy. Because like there was um there was a German coach, a German soccer coach, and um <laughs> I don't know how they caught this on camera, but he put his hands down his pants, uh, like, and then he sniffed it. Because he's so comfortable, <laughs> he's so comfortable in his environment that he doesn't think that cameras are watching him. But like, this, anyways, Alexander, what are you saying? To update you on the Mr. Beast one, finger on the app. Um, the prize was twenty five grand. Whoa! It ended. It ended up ending. He called it off after seventy hours, when four people still had their finger on the app. So they, he gave them all 20 grand. So <laughs> what? we have a Gorilla Girl update, guys. Yeah. Do you remember last week we were talking about Gorilla Girl hair yep. spray? Alexander brought up that thingy majiggy. CJ had no love for her. Well, last couple of days, there has been an update, if you haven't heard. And that is that... Her hair is now free. Is there a picture? It's a lot shorter. <laughs> and the only way she was able... It, so- to- it sounds like she shaved her head. Well, no. She her didn't hair actually, actually looks So like- she Impressed. she ended up going to the ER. Remember how we said, why didn't she, wouldn't you just go yeah. to the ER? She went to the ER. Didn't work. She tried well, all CJ these... Hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean went to the ER, didn't work? That's a bit disingenuous. She went to the ER. She they tried something. They said it will take twenty hours, and she said, "Nah, I'm alright," <laughs> and went home. Is that what happened? No, no, no hold on here. No, she, she she's in America, right? So she went to the ER. She had the incorrect insurance, so she had to go back home. That's not what happened. She tried all these other concoctions, which were you know <laughs> suggested over the, over the net. Didn't work. In the end, this wait. Doc- so she chose to listen to the internet. Rather than listening to the to the ER. Well, she did go to the ER, but yeah, but Alexander yeah, but said she chose to leave the ER. Like they I said, know that. they could help her, and she chose to leave. She said, "I'm no, not. I'm not staying here for twenty hours." 
No, it shows her at the ER with the white stuff on yeah. her head already. Yeah, she, that's what I'm saying. They tried stuff and they're like, it, this is going to take 20 hours. And she said, nah, I'll do it at home. I don't think it was <laughs> as easy as that, though. Just double check on that ER thing for me. Can I see her hair now? Okay, one second. So then what ended up happening was she... So it says she spent 22 hours in the ER. The staff were dumbfounded. The healthcare workers put acetone on the back of her head. It burned her scalp and only made the glue the glue gooey before hardening back up. Oh. It didn't work. Anyway, so the only... Do you know what ended up happening? What? A surgeon from LA caught wind of this and he told her he'll, she, she'll have to go in for surgery. He It was free of charge. It's a surgery that costs about t- between twelve and sixteen grand. Yeah, free of charge, and he and they base him and his medical team try to figure out a concoction of how it will work, and they did it. And there's video of her. So here is her in. If you look at the video here, I I I, I was saying this. This is great advertising for that gorilla glue. I know, right? Yeah, like this stuff, mate. You can't take it off. That was even the surgeons. The are, you need surgeons to separate it. Gorilla Glue did release a statement, by the way, because people were like, "Why they should have helped her, or whatever." But they basically said, "We're aware of the situation. We're sorry to hear, but you know, <laughs> uh, we do indicate on our bottle that it it's, is it's, for <laughs> there was... like do, don't swallow, don't get into eyes or skin or clothing." But we're happy that that it's out. Is basically what they said. <laughs> All right, Michael Jackson uh, wanted to Sorry, that? be a normal person for a day. For a day, and isn't he normal? Isn't he? Isn't he a person? Feel like he was a normal person. Your feel, average feel like Joe. Be able to do normal stuff. He wanted to be a Gary. He wanted to be no, anonymous. Our, our Gary does only anonymous, everything. Yeah. And so he it, wanted to put glue in his hair. One of the things, and he had a, he had a friend that that owned a shopping mall, and the friend said, "You know what?" I'm going to shut down a shopping mall because one of the things that Michael Jackson wanted to do was go shopping and put things in a basket like norm- regular people do. Because going to a closed hey. down shopping mall is normal. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I was going to no. say, like, like, like every normal person, we know the owner of the shopping mall <laughs> and we're able to have the shopping Not mall the shopping closed mall, down for the day. Market. No, so and, it was the shopping and, mall. Oh, shit. Play, play, and play pretend. But what they did is they got all like lo- heaps of his family and friends who dressed up. So some people dressed up as shopkeepers. Some people dressed up as regular shoppers. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he went in and out of all these shops and he and he got you know his basket and he's picking what he wants and stuff and he said it was like he compared it to disneyland because he just never gets to he's it's something he'd never you know been able to do before wow so he had his one Str- glove on. strangely enough i've never done that before and i've been shopping <laughs> I've never gone shopping and my family and friends have dressed up <laughs> to play to play pretend <laughs> all right that's something I've never done. <laughs> so, uh, so um, what? How when are we this? gonna like you know close down shopping mall and you guys play pretend for me? <laughs> we close down, I we close down IKEA, right? Yeah. Ernest, Ernest, and Emma can just have a short as storekeepers. We need to get some shoppers. Yeah. <laughs> and we play pretend. How, how was so this, this experience? This was in two thousand and three. He loved it. There's there's a video of it. Or of, of him talking about it. And then there's this uh, photo and it shows him and his friends or whatever and they're in their outfits. But, uh, yeah. He had a lot I of do, fun. I do find, like, because I think, was it Oprah that talked about this before? Like, she hasn't been to the shops. Like, she couldn't tell you what the price of milk is. She hasn't been to the shops in decades. Like, Wow. I just find that so fascinating that we live in a world where that can be your life, that can be your reality, that you're just that well-known that you can't do something I do on a it daily basis. It would be awful. It, I, I think they actually fit I'm not celebrities. sure it'd be awful. I'm pretty sure oh, I'd prefer yeah. to be a billionaire. Yeah, I was at the shops today. I would <laughs> trade I would trade with them. Okay. <laughs> yes, I would prefer it. However, I would also resent the fact that I couldn't live my, a, a normal life. 
when I wanted, and yeah, that you yeah. can't just like like you can't catching a private but, helicopter. But again, yeah, must be extremely the, hard. The normal life to go to a private beach, I think, is a bit overrated. It's a bit overrated. <laughs> it is when you like don't have it, but the grass is always greener. A struggling, but the grass yeah. is always greener. <laughs> yeah. So if you a lot, you've got to remember a lot of these people weren't always famous. So yes, some were childhood, like famous from childhood, but some people were just regular people before they got famous. So just ha- literally being able to go outside your home when you want, as a regular person would do, and just do the things, the other things that you like, because yes, this is one aspect of your life which has made you famous, but there's more to you than just that. Without all the rest of the hassle, I'm sure, I, I know I would miss that. So you'd miss queuing I'm up. I'm not saying I wouldn't want the money over it, but I'm saying there's certain I mean, times there's where you would just... There's other things that come with being a billionaire and, uh, yeah. and being famous. <laughs> yeah. But no, no, but like, I mean... I'm just... like The first thing that pops in my mind is catching my private jet to Capri to eat like spaghetti marinara whenever I want. No, I, I was talking like, about... I, um, I only think about Toby, Toby Maguire, the, the Spider-Man bloke. Is he Spider Man? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, when yeah, he was, he was yeah. when he was leaving when he was leaving a restaurant or something, and the paparazzi were just smashing him, right? It would be it would and, suck. And he was trying to leave. He's like, he goes, "All right, guys, you've 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 got your photos. I'm just gonna I'm I'm just gonna drive out now." And they wouldn't. They wouldn't leave him alone. Yeah. They wouldn't believe leave him alone. They kept taking photos. So he opened up the window. He goes, "Boys, all right, you've had your photos. It's I'm going." And they persisted. And they were trying to like provoke him, and yeah. and then he he lost it, he lost it. He he started screaming, started swearing at him. He goes, "Can you effing move out of my effing? I'm trying to drive out of." And they're like, "This is the money shot, Bing." And then they got him, and then he drove like this. So this is both both sides of the story. This this is like, one. It would get worse where, if you like, have kids. I see it as. I think the, the whole idea of paparazzi is just incredibly ridiculous to start with. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I a hundred percent empathise with people having to deal with that. But I also still think that trade off for the lifestyle you can live and the struggles, like that stress of not being able to leave a restaurant, doesn't compare to the stress of can I pay my bills next month? Like those two stresses, yeah, are not. You you say that, eyes. but it's also highly linked. And, and to- mind you. Was the restaurant had a, like a Michelin star chef? <laughs> Michelin star chef there? No, I don't know. So it was like probably, probably, it's probably one of the best restaurants in that area. Yeah. Which normal people can't afford to go to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like in I'm not again. This, I'm though, not saying there's no stress involved. I'm no, just no, saying but, I don't think they're equivalent. Well, no, but I don't think you can say that because a lot of the stress, that type of stress, will lead to a lot of anxiety, which leads to then a lot of other things to try and help that but with that you, anxiety. Okay, which... so for example, I, I'm going to use the Tobey Maguire situation. I wasn't, I, I don't know when this happened in his career, yeah. but let's just say this happened after Spider-Man 2. He then did Spider-Man 3. He could have just not done it. This is what I mean in terms of these people, as much as they don't, you don't necessarily put yourself in a position, well, you most of the time you put yourself in a position to be famous, but like you don't necessarily, you don't know what you're getting yourself into until you're in that situation. But then yeah. people continue to keep themselves in that situation, which just yeah, makes me think already, it was yeah. better than the life they used to live. Otherwise they yes. would put themselves out of that situation. Either people that have done or they that just love very doing successfully. what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 pl- and plus like with, um, not all rich people are famous. How about the billionaires that haven't been to the shops ever just because they're billionaires? Yeah. Because they have someone else do it for them. Yeah. I'd like to be rich, but not famous, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But um, I mean, most, pe- most rich people are not famous. Did you they? guys see the yeah. new, the you know, what's going on with Britney Spears recently? She's trying to get out of the lawsuit with, where her... You know, I, f- I found out today she's part Maltese. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, that explains a lot. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. I definitely didn't know that. Um. She, I, I haven't been following it closely. I only know a little bit of what's been happening, but she's trying to get out of the uh, the lawsuit. Mm. Um, I think she's. I think she won that. I think she has just today yeah. or yesterday, something like that. Mm. But there was a. Um, I guess there was the a documentary that came out, which hasn't been released in Australia. Yet. I've not seen it. 
and um, it's, it's got a lot of people on her side and a lot of the media going, we were crap. What the hell did we put this woman through? Because the way that they've shown it is she was going through a mental crisis breakdown and the media and people in general, us and everyone, I was a kid and I even remember it was the whole mocking thing like, oh my gosh, look at Britney Spears, look what she's doing. And she was like pleading with them and they showed interviews where the interviewees would ask her the most disgusting questions. She was asked, are you a virgin? She was asked um, like sexual questions. She was asked about her relationship and what, like give us the details. What what did you really do to Justin Timberlake and all this and that. She starts breaking down crying to the interviewer going, really? Why are you asking? Like, yeah, and they're just pushing, pushing. And then the paparazzi are pushing her and she's just going crazy and everyone thinks it's this big joke. And now when they look back on it, they're like, what the hell? If we were to do that, like you can't do that nowadays with the whole <laughs> bullying the dialogue of mental health and everything like that and also the fact that now we have social media and they and the celebrities have their own platform and they have their own voice whereas back then they it was a lot harder for them to get their own i mean they're still know, message out but yeah. it was um like like the it's media's actually been really, scum, always been scum. yeah it was really scummy like it was horrible really i mean what, if you if what you think about through. If you think about what the media is, literally, like the people say, like whether it's news or what, it, oh, it's to report. It's not. The whole point of the media is to create reality. Yeah, yeah. it's to say th this like, is the narrative. You have no choice. This is the way thing. Like in terms of consumers of it, us, you have no choice in thinking for yourself on what's happening. We're telling you what's happening. Mm -hmm. This is factual. And it's like, that's why it's just a, it's, it's a real, I, I think, especially now with the time we're in, as you say, and like people have a platform to speak for themselves. It's a really just interesting time of battle of narratives. Yeah. And like, yeah. A lot of it's a lot harder for media and paparazzi now to spin it. Like that thing where they were pushing, um, I think Brittany after her hair and, and she got a, she got something and she like slammed the window with it. Was it a crutch or something? I can't remember what it was. Umbrella. And they were, they, and she, like, that was a full mental breakdown. And then the paparazzi go, guy goes, that was a big payday for us. Like, it was bad for her, but it was great for us. And he was, like, nice. loving it. And I mean, like, have what? you guys, have you Mate, seen the Black Mirror episode? It... No. Which there's one? A whole, there's a whole Black Mirror episode with Miley Cyrus as the lead oh, yeah, we'll actress. Oh, and it's, no, it's about. Watch it. Britney. It's, yeah. We did watch it, I think. No, we didn't. Maybe you watched it. Mm. Are you watching? Yeah, crazy. But like, the, like the, uh, Diana, she died because of the paparazzi. Yeah, running away from them. Mm -hmm. like they've, they've caused a lot of havoc. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and they're, they're never been held accountable for what they've done. Mm -hmm. But imagine if you're if you have kids, like you're a celebrity, but then you have kids, then you'd be like, oh, oh wasn't you'd it, see um, red. What's her name? There was a lady that actually sued them for taking a photo of her children. Who was that? Um, oh, what's her name? She was in the X Men Storm. Oh, it, oh, um, Halle Berry. Yeah, I was that's it. But she has kids. Yeah, I, th I thought I thought she sued the media for taking pictures of her children. I didn't know she had kids. Yeah. <laughs> and that is another episode of the B Side Word, episode one hundred eight done. Uh, we we talked about the drunk tank pink. Oh yeah. Hands on hard body. Gorilla glue update. We didn't end up talking about Eduardo Garcia. We talked about the Australian Open and Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's Disneyland, which is just a shopping mall. And we spoke about Cardi B and Valentine's Day. Cardi B and what was the other one we, we did, talked about? Yeah. We talked National about anthems. National anthems. National anthems. Thanks, guys. Huh? See you next week. Wait, wait. Did you? Uh, oh, yeah. See you guys. Bye. 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 Ciao. What the f? I thought you were saying bye to these guys. You know, this this episode has been like Chaos. so like I don't know what the hell happened. Did like, everyone forgot we're on a podcast or yeah. what? What happened? Sorry. <laughs>